Volkswagen ID3 2021 Long-Term Review But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. Welcoming the ID3 to the fleet, November 24, 2021. As electric cars glide quietly yet inexorably into the mainstream, the Volkswagen ID3 might well become the car that defines the family hatchback class in the new era, in the same way that the ubiquitous Volkswagen Golf has done for a good portion of my lifetime. Although the Golf itself isn't ready to be pensioned off just yet, it surely won't be long before the ID3 surpasses its stablemate in the sales charts and takes over as the people's car for the zero emissions age. Given the significance of the car to both Volkswagen and the multitudes who still buy family hatchbacks, I'm fairly excited about the prospect of joining the fast-growing club of ID3 owners. On the face of it, this is a car that ticks a lot of boxes, being strong in a number of key areas, from range and performance to interior space and practicality. That excitement is tempered by a certain amount of trepidation, though, mainly due to the sheer volume of criticism that has been heaped on the ID3, and the latest Golf, over the quality and functionality of its interior. Certainly, anyone expecting to see plush materials in the ID3 is going to be sorely disappointed. Plenty of rivals are fancier inside and have more user-friendly dashboard layouts. However, I'm willing to give the ID3 chance to see what it's like to use every day before I weigh in with any sideswipes of my own. My ID3 is a pro performance model, which means it comes with a 58 kilowatt hours, usable capacity, battery and a 201 bhp motor that drives the rear wheels and delivers a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 7.3 seconds you can get an ID3 with a smaller or bigger battery, the latter promising a headline range of up to 340 miles. My mid-ranger can officially cover 260 miles between charges and the family trim I've gone for, still a very respectable figure. A maximum charging rate of 100 kilowatts means the ID3 can get from 10 to 80% capacity in about half an hour via a suitably powerful public rapid charger, while a full charge from a typical 7 kilowatts home wall box would take about 9 and a half hours. However, I've got only a 3 kilowatts wall box in my garage, so the same fill from near empty will be an overnight job. That's fine for my needs, though. Because its list price is less than 35,000 pounds, my ID3 qualifies for the government's £2,500 subsidy for EVs, with a competitive post-grant price of £32,475 putting it in the same ballpark as the upmarket BMW i3 and high-spec versions of the Citroen e Diarisis C4 and Nissan Leaf. It's also a similar price to Kia's more practical e Niro and Soul F crossovers. Although there are quite a few trim levels to choose from, there's surprisingly little variety when it comes to interior color. Most versions offer only the two-tone gray scheme that my ID3 is sporting. The family also gets front and rear parking sensors, a rear view camera, heated front seats, a heated steering wheel, keyless entry and a panoramic glass roof. And there's a host of advanced driver and safety aids, including adaptive cruise control. Most ID3s come with steel aero wheels, which I think look cheap, so I've splashed out 650 pounds on 18 inches two-tone East Dairy alloys that go nicely with the stonewashed blue metallic paint, 645 pounds, and standard black roof and tailgate. The other option I've added is a heat pump, 1000 pounds. This is an energy efficient way of heating and cooling the cabin and reduces the climate control system's impact on the car's range. It also allows me to warm up and demiss the interior remotely before I set off on a journey. From behind the wheel, the ID3 has a slightly MPV-like feel, in that the windscreen pillars are pushed a long way forward, with sizable quarter lights between them and the doors to aid visibility at junctions, and the base of the screen feels like the front of the car. This might not be everyone's cup of tea, but there's no denying that you get an excellent view forwards into the sides and that the cabin feels very airy. It's already obvious that there have been some lapses in logic when it comes to the layout of the dashboard, and the infotainment system can be frustrating, but it remains to be seen whether these things matter all that much.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.